My name is Whitney Brooks and I am a doctorate student at The Ohio State University and I'm studying adults with autism spectrum disorders and uh, I've done some work with children with autism spectrum disorders. Currently in the DSM-4 uh, there's a hierarchical diagnosis system where um, technically if you diagnose someone with autism spectrum disorder you're not allowed to diagnose them with ADHD. Um, in practice um, it, it happens a lot that that clinicians co-diagnose the two um, and there's a movement towards the DSM-5 being able to co-diagnose those. So the study that I presented here um, involves uh, trying to differentiate symptoms of high-functioning autism spectrum disorders which includes Asperger's syndrome, PDD and OS um, that don't have intellectual disability um, from ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity. Um, but what I wanted to do in this sample was to look at uh, a group that had high-functioning autism spectrum disorders um, without a diagnosis of ADHD and then a group with ADHD without ASD so there was no co-occurring co you know diagnosis in this group. The main result is that several scales of the child behavior checklist um, did a, a good job of differentiating autism spectrum disorders from ADHD. And those were mainly externalizing scales, so the kids with ADHD were scoring higher on attention problems, aggression problems, and externalizing problems in general. I was surprised that there weren't differences between the social problems between the groups. So that would be where you would expect the children with ASD to have higher social problems. Um, so the fact that they didn't is interesting in and of itself because um, the kids with ADHD and ASD are at least on this measure showing comparable social problems. So first of all, I think on the surface a lot of the social deficits in ADHD and autism, um, they tend to look similarly on the surface. Um, so I think that, you know, it, this particular measure, since it wasn't completely a social scale, it was part of several scales, perhaps this measure isn't sensitive enough, sensitive enough to pick up on the more subtle differences. Um, and I also think that they genuinely do share a lot of similarities in social problems. I believe that the, the CBCL is a pretty quick, child behavior checklist is a pretty quick measure, um, and it could be a very good adjunctive um, piece of diagnostic information to, you know, the more structured diagnostic interviews for autism and ADHD. Um, so I think that knowing that this, the child behavior checklist does differentiate these groups on these scales could be a very important diagnostic piece because they're hard to diagnose. Um, I think future direction, though, is to, to figure out um, is to actually have a group that has a co-occurring diagnosis of ADHD and ASD. So um, that's for another study. <laughs>